whisper to him over the <coughs> mic. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Center Church. Good to see you guys today. Let's try it again. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, there you are. There you are. I hope everybody's had a good week. Hope you guys are excited to be in the house of the Lord today. Uh, the second Sunday of Advent. Um, let's start with a scripture. Psalm 96. Starting with verse 1, it says, Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise His name. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. So that's what we're here for, to praise the Lord. So as you make your way to your seats and get settled in, we're going to start with a song here. This is called As For Me. It's a new song from we ended last week. We'll start this week with a new song. But you guys, uh, do we have any announcements while you guys are gathering in? We have the tree lighting service tonight at 6 o'clock. That'll be in the, is that in the main sanctuary? Outside. Okay. Tree lighting service tonight outside, <laughs> 6 o'clock. We'll have... Uh, Carols, verses and songs, and light the tree, celebrate together as a church family. Anything else? Any other announcements? Today? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> and he's right here in front of everyone, so let's sing happy birthday to him. You ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. That's awesome when we get to embarrass a teenager. Now, I'm, I'm really glad Connor... Uh, stepped up and asked me what I like for him to to play with us so um that's good that the young folks want to get involved I hope we have some more who might want to jump in and uh, lend their voices or their talents all right I think that's enough announcements can we stand together and let's sing as for me <coughs> Open up 
every door, write it on every wall, sing in every room, Jesus. Transform me and my house, we will serve the Lord, we will sing of your love forevermore. Transform me and my house, we will serve the Lord, serve the Lord. about a Christmas song. Maybe not exactly like you know it, but it is a Christmas song. Oh, come all ye faithful. Looks like we got some commotion. That's pretty cool, having to add tables to make room for folks. That's a good thing. It's a good thing. We're glad you're here. Let's do this. 
Why don't we take just a minute and uh, let's say hello to one another. Let's greet greet the folks who came in. Hi. And uh, let's greet one another and uh, we'll come back together in a minute or two. I turned it up a little bit. Yeah. Yours, yours and her voice. Is that good where it's at? Good. some some advent calendar or advent candle lighters we do all right as everyone can can gather back in let's uh let's focus our attention here for the reading of the advent it's right there the mic's right there okay the mic is beside the cross Our lists are long, even in these strange times in which we live these days. We want to provide for our families, we want to be safe, and we want to feel the unity of our fellow Americans. We've got work to do to correct what has gone wrong in our world, to heal what is broken, to mend the relationships, and to prepare for enjoying the season with our family and friends. The prophet Isaiah reminded us that there is work to be done. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert the highway for, the, for our God. When God comes in, then healing is to be found. But we need to, do, to make the way. We need to open the door into our lives. So we light these candles as a sign of our faith that, God, that the God we worship is not far from us and that we can clear the way for our God to come and dwell with us. We light these candles in faith that company is coming. 
O come, O come, Emmanuel. Amen. That's a beautiful thing. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you for this family, uh, this church family, but this family who have come forward and and uh, read this Advent celebration, Father. Um, thank you for your blessings to us this week. And uh, Father, in our lives, we just uh, we thank you that <coughs> that we can freely come here and say that that as for for me and my house, we serve you, Father. Uh, we just thank you for for the opportunity to come together as a church family. And, uh, Father, we take this time here to give you our offering of praise and also our offering of thanksgiving. Thank you for all these precious ones who have come together today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So just take a minute during this song. Feel free to bring forward your your gifts back to God. Let's sing together, Cornerstone.
Father, you are Lord of all. We thank you. We praise you today. We pray that as our pastor comes forward, Father, to, to speak the words that you've laid on his heart, give him clarity of thought, Father. Give him, give him clarity of speech. Open our hearts and ears to hear what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Good morning to you. We're so glad to have you with us today. Uh, if you've not been with us before, we especially extend a center welcome to you. We're trying to be in the center of, of God's grace and His love with a heart for this community. So God has called us to that. And we just thank you so much for being with us today. We're going to be talking about, last week we lit the candle of hope. This week we're light, we lit the candle of, of faith. And I'm going to talk about a man who had faith that was called of God and was used in a mighty way to prepare the way for Jesus. And his name was John the Baptist. And you know, I want you to think today that God in so many ways has called you to be a voice for the Lord too. And, you're, and this time, this time, not some distant time, but today, God's called you. So the text is John chapter 1, beginning with verse 19. Would you stand in reverence for the reading of God's Word? Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fall, fail, he did not fail to confess but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. Then asked him, Who are you? Are you Elijah? Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. And finally they said, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I'm the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you're not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John the Baptist responded, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, he was speaking of Jesus, he is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, Lord, open our minds, to our hearts to what you have today. God, open, open up barrels of faith and pour on us, O oh, Father. May that grace cascade down upon us and, now, and then may it flow out on others that we might begin to grasp the magnitude of the call that you've placed on our lives for this time, for such a time as this. Lord, help us. And we ask that you, I ask, Lord, that you'd help me as I preach today. I pray, God, that you'd give me the kind of thought, the clarity of thought that I need and bring things to my remembrance that I might share with your people. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And you can be seated. John the Baptist was called by the Lord to make road, a roadway for the king. Now I want you to think with me for just a minute. We take for granted, we, we came here this morning... How many of you had to ford a creek or anything like that or had to get out and push the horse and the, get the wagon out of the mud? No, you didn't have to do that, did you? It's not been that long ago that it was a job to come down this road right here when it had been wet weather like we've had lately. It would have been one muddy mess out here, especially, can you imagine that intersection out there in that low place, all that water collecting? Oh, my goodness. We take for granted. 
A number of years ago, they were going to build a four-lane road up uh, out, of, out of Caldwell County all the way on up toward, uh, 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 oh, help me, Boone, back up that way, Blowing Rock. And so they was building this road, and they, they were going to just take it so far. And all of a sudden, the thing just bogged down. The reason was they got into the granite rock. And now they did all kind of studies about that. You, that's the way you do, and they do all kind of things. But you know, finally, when it's all said and done, you just have to start the work. And it got up there, and my understanding was it just virtually bankrupt the company that was trying to do it because it was just such hard work. Same thing happened back over at our house, back home. Uh, if you go back out where we used to live, uh, there was nothing but granite on the left-hand side so, I mean, I'm just thinking, you know it's going to be right there where they're working, and it sure was. And, and that company, they just throwed their hands up, I think. And so they finally got somebody else to come in, and they're beginning to do some more work again. But rock can make it hard. You know, sometimes, sometimes, and I'm talking to Christian folks, our hardened heart makes it hard for God to work through us for somebody else. When these religious people came to John the Baptist, they were inquiring. They had been sent by other priests to find out about this guy that's attracting great numbers of people to find out who he was because Malachi had prophesied before Messiah would come that there would be Elijah would come back again. Remember, Elijah never died. He was taken up to be with the Lord, remember? And so they come and they inquire of him, Who are you? Are you Elijah? Are you one of these prophets? Are you the Messiah? And John the Baptist says, No, I'm none of that. But don't you love that the fact is that he's causing so much of a disturbance, people question him. Shouldn't we be causing some kind of, of a godly disturbance in, in, in our community, making such a difference that people would inquire about what we're about, who we are, the message we're sharing? Don't you think that we should be of such a witness that people should be asking some questions? And when they asked John the Baptist a simple question, well, who are you? Don't you love the answer he gave? I am a voice. Folks, are you a voice for the Lord today? John the Baptist said, I am a voice in the wilderness making way for the Lord. I'm a voice. A voice. What a humble answer to answer. I'm a voice. You are a voice for the Lord. A voice. A still, small voice for the Lord in people's lives. You know, in our, in our day and age, and it's been that way forever, I would imagine, it doesn't matter how talented you are. It doesn't matter what kind of degrees you have. It doesn't matter what your pedigree is, where you went to Duke or wherever you went to. When you start on a job, for you to be successful, the people at that place has to make a way for you. Think about that. Doesn't matter if it's a law firm. Doesn't matter if it's a textile mill or a furniture factory. If the people don't make a place for you, you can't succeed. John the Baptist was making a way for people to come to know Jesus. Are you making a way for people to come to know Jesus in your life? By your voice? Does your voice testify with who you claim to be? If they hear you talking... Do, does it resonate that you are a child of God by your witness and what you're talking about? Is it filled with all kind of idle stuff? Is it talk, filled with profanity and vulgarity? What about you? Do you remember Peter when he was in the courtroom? Fast forward the life of Jesus two and a half years. Uh, he's, he's about to be tried and convicted and he's going to be crucified a few short hours later. And Peter went into the courtyard where the trial was going to, outside where the trial was going to take place. He cares about Jesus. He really does. He's answered the call of Jesus on his life. And so Peter goes, and somebody recognizes Peter, and it's a young girl, and she says, Oh, I remember him. 
He was with the Galilean. And what does Peter begin to do? He begins to speak profanity so he could blend in with everybody else. Folks, are you wanting to blend in with everybody else? Or are you a voice crying out in the wilderness? Because people are living in a wilderness now. Always have been. The world's always been a wilderness. Always been a dangerous place. Always been a place that's contrary to God's ways. Are you a voice for those that are captured in darkness today? God's called us to be His witness that we would resonate in such a fashion that we share the glory of God. Look what the text says. John chapter, well, first, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 5. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it. Isn't that marvelous? Then, this is what the Scripture says. He says, The Word became flesh, verse 14, and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Have we seen the glory of God? And does it shine on us that we go forth and that it transforms who we are? And as we share, people know that we've been with Jesus, that they question who we are, what we're about, that we're really being faithful. Folks, we ought to be an oddity from the world. We ought to be the oddballs of society. Do you know that John Wesley, the early Methodist, when, when they were just getting started while he was at Oxford University, higher education hadn't changed. It's always been out there, you know. John Wesley was out there with his guys. They'd gather together at like 5 in the morning, gather to pray and all these kind of things, and, and they had their money that they were going to be able to buy their lunch with and their meals for the week. They would give parts of that up, and they would fast during those times so that they could take what they had to share with other people. They were starting drug dispensaries. They were, they were the drug dealers way back in the day, but they was giving it away. They were, they were sharing medical knowledge with people. They were writing all kinds of pamphlets, Wesley was. They were, they were in the business of nor, orphan, uh, taking care of orphans. They were in the prisons. Back in the day, when you got behind on the Sears payment or the Bank of America payment or whatever, guess what they did? They locked you up in jail, folks. Aren't you glad they don't do that now? We'd lose a lot of folks on Sunday morning. Where's old John at? Oh, he's over at the Davidson County Jail, going to have to stay for the weekends till he gets his debt paid off. Oh, my goodness. So they were doing all kind of mission work. Well, guess what? They, they were, there were several names made about them. One of them was they were called Bible Bugs because they were so deep, in, so deep into the Word. Bible bugs. Would that not be something? Center Bible bug church. That'd be, that'd be pretty neat, wouldn't it? We, we, could have, we start the Christian school, we could have some neat T-shirts, because that'd be the Bible bugs. Wouldn't that be neat? And I could see them with muscles. But Bible bugs. Another name that they were known was, they were, they were, they were called enthusiasts. Enthusiasts. Wow, it'd be hard to sing some of the songs we sing, like this right here, with the name Center Enthusiastic Church, wouldn't it? I mean, that would radically change some things. And then there was the other name that they were known as. And, they were, and these were all derogatory terms. They're putting them down. And the last one that stuck was Methodist. Look at those Methodists. It wasn't a name of flattery. It was a put-down to the folks because they had a method in how they were reaching out, how were they giving to help other people. Methodists. They were odd. They were the oddballs. Christians from way back at the very beginning was odd compared to the world. We ought to be odd. And our voice should proclaim it because we speak different than the world. We're a voice of crying out in the wilderness for Jesus. Telling the story so that people come in out of the woods. I remember my mama yelling a many a day up in the evening. From the time I came in from school, I was in the woods back home. There was no entertainment. We got like two channels on TV. 
there was no this stuff on phones. There was none of that. So I had to go to the woods and get entertained. And up toward dark, Mom would start yelling for me to come home from the woods. You know, it might be do us well if we might be yelling out into the woods and calling people to come in too. To come in out of the darkness <laughs> and discover light. My friends, God's called you. God's called you that you'd be an instrument of cascading grace. I picked up a copy of a book back uh, a year ago, maybe. It's called Grace by Max Licato. And there's a story in that about this shopkeeper down in San Antonio, Texas, who, like every other morning of her life, would go and open her shop. She, was, she sold bri uh, 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 wedding gowns and high-end dresses. And so after Thanksgiving was always a huge time for her. So she was kind of dreading the day that she'd start work. She got in. She didn't know that across town there was a man named Jack Altry who was suffering from the final stages of melanoma. And unbeknownst to her, that family would be coming in that morning because the daughter was preparing for a wedding. Now, can you imagine the cloud over top of that bride? She didn't even want to go in that day to look for a dress. The family encouraged her to go. Her name was Chrysalis. And so she goes in, she looks for that dress, looks for just the right gown. And she found one that everybody loved. Her daddy always called her princess. And so she found a dress that made her look just like one. She came out modeling the dress, and there wasn't a whole lot of joy. There was just kind of melancholy and quiet among the party that was looking at things. The shopkeeper, Amy, she thought something was wrong, but she didn't know. She thought, well, maybe these are just quiet people, you know. Well, she found out about her, the dad's cancer and how bad it was. And she also discovered that they didn't have the money because of medical bills to pay out for a dress. So Amy said she'd hear nothing of them, them not taking that dress. She told them to take the dress, said you need to go straight to the hospital and you need to model it for your daddy. She didn't write down a credit card number. She didn't write down a phone number. She said she just knew that the Lord wanted her to do that for that family. And indeed they did. They left. When Amy arrived she, she, uh, to, at her father's room, he was heavily medicated. He was asleep. The family uh, got him awake. The doors to the door, room slowly opened, and there he saw his daughter engulfed in 15 yards of layered billowing silk. He was able to stay alert for about 20 seconds. Amy said, but those 20 seconds were magical. My daddy saw me walk in wearing the most beautiful dress. He was really weak. He smiled and just kept looking at me. I held his hand and he held mine. I asked him if I looked like a princess. He nodded. He looked at me a little more. And it was almost like he was about to cry. And then he fell asleep. Three days later, Jack would die. A shopkeeper's generosity of grace cascaded down on a daughter and a daughter's grace cascaded down on a dad. That's the way grace is. Faith was passed on and on and on. Friends, Somebody has shared the Lord with you and made a difference for you. Why aren't you sharing the story with other people? Why aren't you exercising your faith to make a way in the wilderness for somebody else? 
You've got daughters. You've got sons. You've got wives and husbands. You've got neighbors. Share that story with other people. Share that Jesus has made a difference in your life. Make a roadway, folks. And if you're not living faithfully with the Lord, you can forget about building a roadway. Because all they see is potholes and something they can't believe in. So it's time for us to start living faithfully with Him and making a difference. Do you want to be an instrument for Him? Do you want to be a voice crying out in the wilderness? One man, John the Baptist, made a difference. And you can too. You're not called to be John the Baptist, but you're called to be the voice in 2022 and beyond. Be faithful with it. Share the story. Because God loves you. Let's bow our heads and have a prayer. Oh Lord, your word says we have not because we ask not. Lord, on these people gathered here today, pour out your Holy Spirit upon them. Baptizing them with fire, Lord, and a holy boldness to be your witness. Use them, Lord, to be the voice among so many other voices, among the racket of this world. Lord, Help us to be your voice. That grace would cascade down from our lips because we received that grace one time ourselves. Help us, Lord. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for coming today. God bless you. Would you stand?
Thank you for this opportunity to come together in your house to be to be fed from your word, Father. Uh, we just we thank you that that you care for us, Father. You are the God who never changes, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same God who sent Jesus in human form to be born to die for our sins each one of us in this very room. Father, we pray that, that as we go out of this place that, that we will be, as our pastor spoke to us, that we will be as a voice crying in the wilderness, that you will be magnified through our lives, Father, that people will see the difference and wonder and ask. Father, give us the strength, give us the, the boldness, give us the words to say to, to glorify you to, to not be off-putting, Father, but to, to love them to you, Father, to bring them closer to you, to make them curious so that they will indeed seek you out, Father. We thank you for this opportunity to get together with our church family, Father, and we just pray your grace, your mercy, your blessings upon each one in this place today. As we go forward from this place, go with us, lead us, guide us, direct us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for coming. I hope you guys have a wonderful week.